I'm Phil. And I'm Angelina. With our husky lightning and a lot of wildlife around us, we live in this fairy tale chateau in France. We love bringing this neglected castle back to life inside. And we've got the vast grounds and parkland to take care of as well. We love the moat, but it brings some challenges with it. But it's all worth it when we get to share it with everyone at our live music events. Follow the ups and downs of our chateau life. Right, do you know what? Just as I was going to go out for a little cycle first thing this morning with Angelina, because the sun's out and thought a bit of fresh air might make me feel a bit better, and I got a phone call from Shane because apparently um, someone wants to do an interview with us all that went to the Ukraine border, um, local newspaper, nothing major. Uh, but that's kind of put paid to my morning cycle. So here I am down at Anglo Auto, and I've just seen something. I'm parked next to my old car. Oh, I miss it now. Oh, I wonder if it's for sale again. Nope, stop it, I'll be in trouble. All right, little interview for the, the local newspaper done. And it was quite a fun discussion uh, as we have been in touch with various aid agencies um, in the area because of what we did and uh, our sort of fundraising. And that's a massive thank you to all of you out there that helped uh, and everyone locally. Um, and the aid agencies have all managed to get themselves um, focused on the sort of the area in the Polish <laughs> near the Polish border of the Ukraine, and now of course it's spilling over uh, into um, uh, Moldova, which is a, an extremely um, a poor country. Really, uh, can't handle their own population, let alone uh, an influx of people who need housing. And Romania, so there is a distinct possibility that um, some of the aid agencies we're working with would like to receive another couple of lorry loads worth of, uh, now it's actually dried foods, um, cereals, uh, medical supplies, all the things that I guess we take for granted and they just can't physically get enough of it there. So that is, I guess, something that we're gonna be discussing over the coming days and week and, um, and see what we can do because it's an ever evolving situation. However, once again, I am the luckiest man alive, uh, not just because I wake up and I have a beautiful wife, but because of where I wake up. Look at this. So today, I've got to save the chapel. Let me explain. There's our pretty little chapel out the front. And I showed you yesterday, there's a lot of ivy growing up the back of it. That, while well, is getting done, it's not the saving bit this tree see how this lot is all leaning right over towards it well our local tree surgeon has said we need to deal with that because just like that stump back there was a huge tree which fell over and went straight across the driveway so this one is at risk of it as well and at the moment that will 100% take out the chapel so today we're saving the chapel. Now, obviously, other than the fact that it's a building on our land, which needs to be saved, history and everything else, uh, I got married out in front of this. So, definitely gonna save it. Uh, even if it wasn't for the fact that, you know, I quite like the building. But, you know, definitely sentimental moments attached. So let's make sure it doesn't get crushed by a tree. See who is working on this. Who's the dream team on this today? <laughs> Rick, Angelina. That's it, you're on Ivy duty. Rick, yeah. Rick is with his machete, like it's Halloween. <laughs> I've got the baby one, you had the big one, didn't you? <laughs> and I'm with my magic tool. We're just removing some ivy, because obviously that's no good. And obviously we're trying to do as much as possible on the chapel. Cool stuff. Uh, I'm going to get the cherry picker out and deal with that tree. So, first job, we fire up this thing. Let's hope I don't get showered with water like last time. Uh. Okay. Oh, 
a bit tight. This is a long process. Here is a better idea of why this is a dangerous tree. You can see the state of lots of these branches, huge amounts of uh, mistletoe, mistletoe everywhere. And ultimately when branches are coming out and then coming down to try to collect the light, that's not healthy. They should be going up. So let's sort this, get rid of that weight and make sure this doesn't fall on the chapel. Might be a bit of a lump to try to park around here. It needs a little bit of work, but this is a useful tool. I am not going to deny. Right, if you stand back now and look all the way up the tree, it's all a bit more symmetrical, not all going to one side. So now we're just gonna have to sort out the branches which are not quite cut back and then the one coming this way. And then uh, this one's done. I think we are safe. So the mess has been made and now it's time to tidy up. I've got Billy in here. End of day wrap up, high fives. Yeah, <laughs> another great day. Till tomorrow. Yes, yeah, same thing tomorrow, something. Well, we have managed to clear up after ourselves. We caused, uh, well, a lot of devastation on the ground beforehand, but this is great. And the chapel is nice and safe, or its roof, shall I say, for sure. The work does, does never end here. How are you feeling about today, Philly? Well, I am very happy that I now no longer have to look at that tree and every time the wind's blowing I think that the chapel might end up dying. Uh, and flip side to that is the tree will be healthier, there's going to be more light, the grass underneath, the flowers, everything is healthier. Nothing here has been looked after properly in a good 40 years and this is the first step. So Until we came along. <laughs> Yay! Well done. Yeah.